Hi, I'm Yanis Chrysodoulou, and I'm the founder and owner of Athene Consulting Company Limited here in Thailand. Um, the company is specifically working on training solutions uh, for the livestock and aqua industry. Today, I have the pleasure to be joined with uh, Lucas Manomadis. Hi, Lucas. Hello. And uh, Lucas is the Southeast Asia Technical Director for US Export Council. Lucas, pleasure to have you with us today. Um, uh, we would like to take a couple of minutes here to actually discuss our uh, new initiative, which is the Impon Raceway System Online Agri School. And uh, this year, as we did with last year, we are going to be working together with US uh, Soya Export Council and Lucas team here in Asia to put together a training program specifically for fish farmers. So, Lucas, um, can you tell us a little bit about the system? Sure. Okay, so I work for the U.S. Soybean Export Council. USEC has actually been working for quite a long time on this technology called Inpon Raceway Systems. This is a, an initiative by us to try to work with industry to show ways they can increase yields from the same volume of water. And this is very important, particularly in places like China, mm -hmm. which have less and less areas to expand to. In fact, they're contracting their areas for production, but also in places like Southeast Asia and other places that want to maximize their production from a given volume of water. And so IPRS at its root is really a way to allow us to grow up to maybe three times the amount of fish from the same, from the same water volume and also have a lot of other management aspects and maybe other potential economic aspects. You know, we can have other income streams coming from, the, from these pond systems. So, for example, from the production side, we're able to put all the fish in one location so we can easily feed them, we can look at them, we can... We can uh, treat them if they need to be treated for any, any problems, we can grade them, and we can partially harvest them as needed. And then when it comes to the economic side, we can get money from not just the fish that are harvested, but also fish from the, from the pond that are service species that are not really targeted for the feeds, and also maybe perhaps from the fertilization that comes from the waste that's removed from the system. Wow. It's a, it sounds like it's a, it's a system that it offers more than just a benefits to the farmer. Mm -hmm. But talking about the benefits to the farmer, if I am a farmer, why should I be interested to look into IPRS technology? Right. Well, I mean, we're standing in front of a traditional pond here in the background, and it's, it's a perfectly good system. And USEC has worked for many, many years with these, these systems, helping develop better approaches using traditional pond techniques. But one of the issues that we, we've, we've noted with these techniques is that when you have a static water system, you have to put a lot of effort into harvesting the fish. Mm -hmm. The water qualities are variable because you often have thermal stratification in the ponds, which means that if you jump into a, pond, into a lake or something, you feel the, the warm water on top and suddenly the cold water. Well, that cold water tends to be lower in oxygen. And so actually fish can't utilize that area very well. It also impacts the way that biological processes happen in the pond. So from the farmer's perspective, you know, if you're looking to improve your profitability, mm -hmm. There's a lot of aspects here from IPRS that make sense. You get a higher yield. Number one, that's very important. Number two, the fish themselves are going to be of better quality because the fish are constantly swimming in the raceway system, so the, the, the flesh tends to be a better quality. You're using better quality feeds, and you, so it means you also get faster growth. So faster to market. Uh, and when it comes to harvest time, it's very easy. They're all in one small location. You just scoop them up and go. And you can very closely monitor what's happening. So you can protect the fish better mm -hmm. from predators. So if you're having any problems with bird predators, you, you can cover it with a, with, a, with a mesh to make sure no birds can get into it. You can feed them much more accurately because all the fish are in one place. You're not wasting feed, so you reduce FCRs, so you improve your margins there. And then, as I said, there's other income streams that come out of it. You can get income streams from, from the waste, particularly from, from freshwater ponds, that solid waste can be used as fertilizer on row crops. Um, I know that in America they actually sell it in, in uh, you know, a couple of liter bottles where they That's sell right. it on, online. That's right. And then, and then uh, you can also do things like aquaponics, which is uh, not, you know, something that you use those waste, those dissolved nutrients in the water to actually grow plants that can have an economic value for you. So from the standpoint of ease of use, also labor use, and, and uh, just ease of being able to culture your fish, it's a very efficient system, and it provides it provides benefits to the ecology as well. I mean, there's a, a sustainability aspect to this as well. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Finally, the underlying question here: uh, Why USAC? Why uh, um, U.S. Soya being export council so much interested on promoting the IPRS technology worldwide? Okay. Well, 
the basic stand, standpoint for USAC is we want to see a, a larger, long-term feed-based aquaculture industry. And when I say that, what we, we're talking about, we're talking about sustainability, but we're talking about feeds. Right. And that's where the soybeans go into. You know? So from our standpoint, our primary interest, of course, is, is uh, slightly selfish. We would like to see more sales of, U, of U.S. soy into aquafeeds. U.S. soy is a, an ingredient that has a certified sustainable certificate you can get for it. So when you talk about uh, certification programs like BAP or ASC that require certi cert certified sustainable ingredients, you have that from U.S. soy. But the volume of the feeds is also very important because we're talking about a, a dramatic rise in the volume of feeds being used. And it's something that if we, if we promote it out to the industry, you know, we're finding that people are very interested in this. So this was developed 25 years ago, probably for about the past 10 years, USEC was very involved with this. And, and now in China, there's over 6,000 of these raceway cells in operation. And now we're spreading globally. Here in Southeast Asia, we have probably over 300. And uh, globally, you know, it's increasing as well. So, you know, from our standpoint, and I think from our funding agencies, particularly the U.S. soybean farmers, the interest here is in seeing what it is that, that can be done to help improve the industry, but also help improve the, the areas that we can sell better feeds that include U.S. soy in them. Fantastic, Lucas. Thank you so much for the detailed explanation. And uh, we look forward to having you all on board with us to witness a program that you are putting together. If you want to plan for it, we are looking forward to a three or four day event where we are going to cover the whole aspect of IPRS systems from the beginning, how to design it, how to build it, how to run it, how to manage it, and most importantly, how to make economic benefits out of it. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again shortly. Thank you. Thank you.